Greetings. So today we're going to discuss a white paper or something that is called a black paper for reasons that will be elaborated upon later by Nassim Taleb about why Bitcoin is not a suitable vehicle for any of the things that the Bitcoin pushers advocate. Now, those of you who are familiar with this channel realize that I am generally against Bitcoin and to some extent against all cryptocurrencies. And I'm also very adamant that average people should not get mixed up in cryptocurrencies. So nothing in this video should induce you to buy or not buy or sell any cryptocurrencies if you're just a retail investor. I am not trying to tell you to do anything either way. You just present information that allows you to form your own conclusions. But in my view, average people should not get mixed up in cryptocurrencies. And I've been consistent about that. Now, what is my expertise as a fintech expert? Well, considering the fact that I have spoken at conferences with audiences of up to 3,000 people, including the premier fintech conference in the world, Money 2020 in Las Vegas, where I was a keynote speaker, the fact that I've been on a number of TV shows to discuss the subject of fintech as well as blockchain, and the fact that I teach this subject at Stanford University and have done so for some time in two different departments of Stanford University, you should take that into account. Does that make me a luminary or not? That is for you to decide. Now back to this paper, Nassim Taleb, as you may know, is the author of books like Black Swan and Anti-Fragile, and he has introduced a number of important concepts about the nature of modern economics. And he was someone who was somewhat pro-cryptocurrency before, but now he's relatively against it. And he's written this paper that I mentioned about why Bitcoin is not suitable for any of the potential objectives that its fans think it addresses. And I'm going to go to a talk that he had at the CoinGeek conference where he elaborates on some of the points about why Bitcoin is unsuitable. And they're similar to points I have made in the past, but I have some additional points against it that I will elaborate on after we look at his clip. I would even be a gold trader for a while. So, and I'm going to tell you, there are things about gold that, 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 that I convinced you, gold is not a currency. Then you realize Bitcoin is even less of a currency and even less of a story. So my main point is that number one, a currency must never be a speculative investment. You need a currency to uh, be fixed with respect to some kind of index of goods and services that you could sell. The second point is a store of value must have arbitrage value. So it doesn't become speculative. Uh, and, and, and effectively, a stock has arbitrage value. Stock and custom sheet, you can liquidate. Uh, and, and, and the company yeah, it's a uh, coke. Raiders did in the 80s, and if stock uh, price becomes too expensive, competitors will come in offering goods that's off in a free market, of course. And then uh, the the third point, transactional flexibility does not require complete decentralization. I was sold on Bitcoin. I was sold on cryptos. And why? Because to me, it was a logical extension of the internet. I'm doing the transaction that was peers. The except I realized that something completely 100% decentralized that doesn't do anything for us. I mean, so what? You don't want a custodian because you're paranoid that there's going to be a custodian? You know, in, in 37 years of trading, I haven't seen anybody complain about a custodian right. and even worry about a custodian. So that's not the, the problem. With it. The problem is the reversible transaction. And then for uh, the fourth point is hopefully you have time to discuss how to build a true store of value or inflation And at the time, what I come on a different perspective from Riel, is that I don't really like governments on currencies. I come from a more libertarian standpoint, and I want to fight for the libertarian that Bitcoin is not the same that they should brand me for. So those points are all valid for sure. But in addition to that, the further problems with Bitcoin are one, transaction validation requires incentives for miners, and mining is a super wasteful and energy inefficient activity. Bitcoin mining alone consumes 1 150th of the entire world's electricity. 1 150th. That is as much as an entire country the size of Spain, perhaps. That's crazy. The first 30 million electrical cars that are on the road will not consume as much electricity as Bitcoin is already consuming. So if these miners find Bitcoin mining to be inefficient or unprofitable, then the whole premise of Bitcoin goes away. Problem number one. Problem number two, it depends on the concept of scarcity, and that's not what technology is about. The fans of Bitcoin keep saying that there's only 21 million Bitcoins, and that's why it has a fixed supply, and therefore the price should go up because of scarcity. That's absurd because there are, in fact, 
an additional 10,500 cryptocurrencies that have emerged after Bitcoin. 10,500 and more are emerging every day. And all of them are much more advanced in terms of their distributed ledger than Bitcoin is. Bitcoin, on account of being the first, is actually the most primitive. And that's the funny aspect of Bitcoin psychology and human psychology, because humans think that whenever the first of a series arrives, the first is always the best. Everyone thinks that the first actor to play a certain character is always the best one. Every country thinks that its first leader is always the best one. But in reality, by being first, Bitcoin, by definition, has the most technologically primitive ledger. You cannot do smart contracts on it, and it is super energy inefficient, and the entire paradigm of mining is just perverse because it is wasteful and too many resources are being drawn into something of extremely low productivity. And those are problems Bitcoin has even in relation to other cryptocurrencies. I'm not a fan of even the other cryptocurrencies either because they're unnecessary. You don't need a cryptocurrency product to further distributed ledger technology. And distributed ledger is not something profoundly new. It's just a more advanced version of digital rights management, which has existed since the early 2000s. And which is why you can purchase music and have streaming video on the internet, which was not possible back in 2003, perhaps. But back to Bitcoin. These are the problems with Bitcoin and why it does not function as an inflation hedge, even though there is not hyperinflation. So anyone who buys Bitcoin for purposes of an inflation hedge, that's absurd because A, it's not an inflation hedge if there were high inflation, and B, there is not high inflation in the first place, as I have explained on this channel many times. So Nassim Taleb has done a good service in exposing some of the conceptual flaws of Bitcoin, but he actually does not go far enough because he doesn't do enough to explain why mining itself proves that Bitcoin is not resonant with the first principles of technology and the paradigm of a fixed supply of currencies is also not resonant with the first principles of technology. Now, many commenters have asked me to do a video about the first principles of technology. I will do that at some point, but that's a relatively long list and very profound. It's hard to make it a complete list at this point. But I encourage everyone who's really interested in cryptocurrency or even just the evolution of fintech and decentralization of financial payments to read Nassim Taleb's black paper, as he calls it. And you may learn something from that because I believe that many years from now, the Bitcoin craze and even the cryptocurrency craze will not be viewed as favorably as the backers are trying to make it be viewed as right now. This does not mean Bitcoin will go away. This is where I disagree with Nassim Taleb. He says it could go to zero. I don't think it'll go to zero. It'll always exist on the fringes because here's the problem. Bitcoin is actually very useful to the criminal element of the world, whether drug lords from South America organized crime from New York City or Sicily, or terrorists from the Middle East. They all can make use of Bitcoin for financial transactions and anonymity, and that's one of the negatives of Bitcoin. It has, in fact, unified the criminal elements of the world. Those three types of criminality that I mentioned perhaps could never have worked well with each other because of differing objectives and differing geographies, but they now all have a vested interest in the continuation of Bitcoin, and that is a problem. In fact, that is how Bitcoin enables a lot of crime that might not have been as easily conducted before. These entities certainly want Bitcoin to continue, and that's true of other cryptocurrencies as well. It doesn't mean Bitcoin is necessarily worse than other cryptocurrencies, but to the extent that one-fourth to one-third of all cryptocurrency transactions, including Bitcoin, are of a criminal nature is something to also consider and take pause for. So that's why I say cryptocurrencies are a fad and not resonant with the first principles of technology and will not be seen as historically very, very important. That is my opinion. I reiterate again that average people should not get mixed up in cryptocurrencies. You will probably regret it. And if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And thank you very much for watching.